Hi, I'm Clemens van Roosel and I'm an associate professor in the Energy Technology and Fluid Dynamics Group at the Department of Mechanical Engineering. With me here today is Elisa Bergkamp. Hi, I'm Elisa. I'm a PhD candidate at ETFD. We wanted to give this talk face to face, but that is currently not possible. Instead, we are social distancing and will give this talk from home. In this video, we will talk about how we integrate challenge-based learning into an existing project at our department. At our department, all project-based courses follow the same format. Students are divided into groups and assigned a tutor. Typically, they receive an assignment in week 1 and present their results in week 8. There are no weekly lectures, <sighs> only project meetings. During the meetings, the tutor will make sure the group works as a team. Because of their experience with solving problems as a team, Eindhoven engineers are highly valued by industry. Eindhoven engineers have experience with every stage of the design process. From the first calculations to presenting the final project to the customer. To stay at the top of our game, at TUE we innovate our educational program to train the engineers of the future. We aim for our students to become engineers who combine in-depth knowledge of one or two disciplines with the skills to address real-world challenges in science and technology. Moreover, they need to have a comprehensive view of how technology is affecting our lives. And finally, they must learn how to be lifelong learners, able to keep adapting to fast-changing knowledge and circumstances. To educate the engineer of the future, there will be a shift from teaching to learning, this shift is facilitated by offering challenge-based learning. In challenge-based learning, students will learn how to acquire and apply knowledge by engaging in real-life challenges. To study the implementation of challenge-based learning, we organize a small-scale pilot within an existing project-based course. In this pilot, specific groups participated in a challenge-based version of the project. The pilot was monitored by colleagues from the Eindhoven School of Education. The goal of the project-based course is to formulate a mathematical model of a dynamical system, and to determine relevant model parameters through experiments. Currently, groups are provided with a setup for which they have to derive the model. What are we supposed to do with this floating cube? It's a model of a container ship in the open ocean. But the CBL pilot groups had to define their own model problem. Maybe we can model the force exerted on a billiard ball. Ooh, I love playing billiards. By being able to choose what we want to study, our ownership increases and we feel much more engaged. When guiding students from teaching to learning, it's important to make sure that they stay within their zone of proximal development. The zone of proximal development lies between the zone of what a student can already do and what he cannot do by himself. When a student is in the zone for a certain challenge, they will be able to complete the challenge with guidance and encouragement from the teacher and from fellow students with different backgrounds. This way, the student will have learned something new without having been formally taught. To make sure students challenge themselves enough and to track their progress throughout the project, we focused on on-the-job coaching and implemented an additional formative assessment. For this formative assessment, we had the pilot groups communicate their initial ideas to us within the first week. This way, we could immediately make sure they were on the right track. Look, this group wants to study the spin of a billiard ball. To make sure that the challenge-based groups would reach the same level as the regular groups, we gave them certain guidelines. Do you think they can design a reproducible experiment? That won't be easy at all, but I think that if they are creative, they can perform satisfactory experiments. Should we remind them that they should set up a reproducible experiment? Yes, and let's ask the tutor to closely monitor the development of their experiment. Let's make a billiard ball with an internal spin sensor that connects over Bluetooth. I'm not sure that is a good idea. Our experiment should be ready within a few weeks, and the teachers already told us that it will be challenging. To guide the students through their project, we also organized a midterm poster presentation. In this presentation, we provided the groups with instant feedback. During the course, we also put extra effort in coaching the tutors, making sure that they were acting as challenge-based learning ambassadors. This intensified interaction with the tutors also helped us to recognize situations in which the groups required coaching from our side. At multiple occasions, our project team met with the groups to support them with their projects. 
we decided to do our first experiment soon to check whether everything worked as planned. We used the billiard table at the study association and the camera on one of our phones. Then we found out that we actually need a high-speed camera which we borrowed from the simulation and experimentation lab. Finally, we were able to conduct the experiments multiple times under the same conditions. In our pilot, we observed that the challenge-based groups reached the same technical quality as the original groups. This took away our concern that due to the groups having to shape their own IDs, they would not have sufficient time to execute the technical part of the project. What we noticed is that the students of the challenge-based groups started up their project sooner than the regular groups. This is mainly an effect of the mandatory project deliverable in week one. Also, the intensified on-the-job coaching by our committed tutors and fellow teachers helped the groups to rapidly develop their IDs. The feedback that we received from our pilot students and tutors was really helpful to understand how to integrate challenge-based learning into our project. We really liked that we got to choose what we wanted to work on, but the topic dynamical systems is a bit too abstract. It would be nice if you could provide some context we can relate to. That's a great suggestion. And what did you think of the size of the group? I think it's good that the group was a bit smaller. When the group is too big, not everyone can contribute equally. I enjoyed seeing the variation between the different groups that I tutor, but now that the project is more open-ended, I'm a bit lost on how I should coach them. We were very happy with the outcome of our pilot and decided that, as of next academic year, the project should be challenge-based for all 200 students. We are using the feedback from the pilot to redesign the course. We will place the project in a societal context of the energy transition and rebrand it with a new name, Modeling of Time-Dependent Systems, Energy Storage and Transport. The size of the groups will be reduced to five students, but to make sure this does not increase the workload for the tutors, the number of weekly tutor-supervised meetings will be reduced from two to one. In addition, groups will work one half day per week in the lab, where they will be supported by one of the course teachers and more experienced TAs. And finally, we will provide extra training for the tutors prior to the course. In this training, we will focus on how to coach students in challenge-based learning. Of course, this is a lot of work, and we are happy to be supported by a great team. And of course, we are thankful to the TUE Innovation Fund for their support. Now, do you want to join us on a virtual tour through our new course? Great, let's go. We will kick off the project on the first morning of the quarter. On that same day, the students will already have their first group meeting. During the first week, the groups will pick an energy source and a demand, and will develop a conceptual idea for the storage and transport solution that they want to model. At the start of the second week, the groups have to pitch their idea to a panel of experts. Let's hope their idea meets all requirements, because otherwise they will have to present an improved idea later that week. During the second and third week, the groups will settle in their routine schedule of group meetings. Besides these supervised meetings, they are expected to work about 12 hours per week on their project. Halfway through the project, the groups will present a status update during a postal session. During this session, they will also receive feedback from their fellow students. Hopefully, the groups will incorporate the feedback from the poster presentations during the second half of the project. In this part, the students will fine-tune their model developments and perform experiments to validate parts of their model. Toward the end of the project, the students will work on their final deliverables. This includes a short technical report that outlines the technical details of the developed model. They will also prepare a business case presentation, in which they pitch their energy storage and transport system to the jury of experts. Let's hope most groups do a great job, and maybe there are even some great ideas that should be given some follow-up study. But of course, there will also be points of improvement, both in terms of teamwork and in terms of personal development. During the final DBL meeting, the students will be evaluated by their tutors. They will also conduct a peer evaluation. This will provide them with feedback on their personal development. The project will officially be closed with a project evaluating lecture. During this lecture we will discuss high-level observations on the performance of the groups. This will include both positive highlights and points of improvement. We are super excited to work out all the details with our team. Of course, there's still a lot of work ahead of us, but we can't wait till we can get started with our project right after the summer. In the meantime, we are curious to hear your thoughts on our project. If you have a short comment, feel free to drop it in the comment section below this video. We will respond to your comment as soon as possible. And if you want to discuss with us in more detail, just contact us through one of the usual channels. We're happy to talk to you anytime. 
And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked this video. Thanks for watching.